Hi everyone, I'm Elle. Today I'm going to be talking about objects of reference. For some of you this will be something you use daily, others maybe not so familiar. So I'm going to start with a quick explanation of what objects of reference actually are. So objects of reference are physical objects which represent a person, place, action or concept. They can be used to convey or receive information without needing an understanding of traditional communication means such as spoken word, symbols, signing or pictures. So for people with PMLD, meaning is often conveyed by current experience. Communication methods which are not relying on this current experience or traditional communication means can allow for a person with PMLD to be informed of something before it happens. This is what objects of reference are really great for. So let's have an example. A person with PMLD needs to brush their teeth. Rather than having a strangely textured and often strongly flavoured thing suddenly thrust into their mouth, using objects of reference can forewarn the person of an imminent activity. So, what kind of thing constitutes an object of reference? Well, it needs to be something with a close link with the activity or thing it represents, particularly for people at pre-intentional levels of communication. In the toothbrushing example, a good object of reference would be the person's toothbrush, either their own or a duplicate. Being given the chance to explore the toothbrush can allow the person to make connections with what they are interacting with, the object of reference, and what is about to happen. They may explore the object independently or someone may help them, perhaps by gently moving the bristles over their hand or their cheek before rotating it to the plastic side or bamboo if you've got the new environmentally friendly toothbrushes. An example of a poor object of reference with little relevance to a person with PMLD would be a set of comedy wind-up dentures. Whilst you or I might be able to extrapolate the concept from the object, ah, these are pretend teeth, like my teeth, we're going to brush my teeth, that's actually a really complex concept for someone with PMLD. A toothbrush has clearly a much more relevant link to the activity of toothbrushing. Often, when people are not having any success with objects of reference, it's because they're using objects without a strong link to what they represent, or they're using far too many objects, which I'll go into more detail on shortly. So, an object of reference is a physical thing which represents a person, place, action or concept and it can be used to convey or receive information without a needing for an understanding of traditional communication means. Objects of reference can be used to tell someone about something which isn't actually happening yet. Basically, it's just nice to know what's going to happen before it actually happens. And objects of reference are a great way to communicate with people without traditional means of communication, such as those with PMLD. Also, because they're very tactile, they don't actually require visual or auditory processing and can therefore be accessed by people who have visual impairments, hearing impairments or those who are deaf blind. Objects of reference are really very inclusive and very helpful. Now, if you're familiar with objects of reference, you might have heard the discussions, particularly in schools, around whether objects of reference must be individualised for each person or whether a standard set can be used, often referred to as standardised objects. It's important to remember that objects of reference are not a symbolic language. It's not like Makaton or PEX where standard symbols, signs and gestures can be used for everyone. Standardising objects of reference can make them meaningless. For example, if we take a spoon to represent mealtime, for someone who eats by using a spoon, that is quite a good object of reference. However, for someone who has a peg feed, that's not relevant at all. Their experience of having food doesn't involve a spoon. So by standardising an object for a group of people with PMLD, such as in a classroom, you might be making that object meaningless to some or most or even all of those people. Whilst it might be tempting for convenience or speed to standardise objects 
when groups of people with PMLD are in one place, such as in a school or a day centre, it's absolutely critical that for each person using objects of reference, they have their own individual small set which is relevant to them. Now, I mentioned briefly earlier, using too many objects can make it really difficult for a person with PMLD to distinguish between one thing and another, especially where they are similar in feeling. We're asking a lot for a person with PMLD to process the sensory information, search through their internal catalogue of objects, and then connect it with an activity place or so on. If that person uses four objects regularly, which represent the things most relevant for them to know about, it's much more straightforward than asking them to process, identify and connect 20 objects, most with little relevance to their interests. So again, looking mostly at schools here, if you've got a big box full of objects which represent each different lesson that your students with PMLD might access, those are not objects of reference, those are activity cues perhaps. Whilst it's tempting to have an object for absolutely everything a person with PMLD might access, remember we're not trying to use a symbolic language here, there shouldn't be an object for every single word you might use. The objects of reference used by a person with PMLD should be relevant to what they need to know. Let's look at a scenario. In this one, a person has four objects, a blanket to represent bedtime, a suction tube to represent oral suctioning, a toothbrush, as we discussed earlier, and a continence pad to represent personal care. These are things which represent important parts of this person's daily life, and giving advanced warning to the person can make these times less stressful or worrying, particularly for the more invasive things like personal care and suctioning. For these objects to acquire meaning, the person must be exposed to them every time before that activity occurs and whilst it is occurring. This is key. And of course, these cognitive links between the object and what it represents are not going to be made overnight. But with perseverance, objects of reference can become extremely useful for conveying information to a person with PMLD. So consistency and perseverance are key. Objects of reference should be used wherever a person is. So if you're a parent using objects at home and you have respite carers, they should also use the objects. Or if you're a school teacher, all the assistants and the families at home should be using them too. Repetition and consistency are essential for the successful implementation of objects of reference. And yes, it means an extra bag of things that's got to travel with this person wherever they go, and often they've already got a lot of equipment, but it is essential. Objects of reference can allow you to communicate information to a person with PMLD about things that are about to happen. It's essential for their mental well-being and their understanding of the world around them. So, as you've probably already gathered, I'm a big fan of objects of reference. I think they are fantastic. They're accessible. They're relatively cheap to install. They are a great way of communicating information in advance, letting people know what's going to happen before it actually happens. So we're not just springing things on people with PMLD. And for that, objects of reference are fantastic. So if you're new to objects of reference, I really hope this talk has encouraged you to do some research and perhaps see if it might be a good approach to adopt for the person you support or the people you support with PMLD. If you'd like to find out more about objects of reference, I conducted research through a series of questionnaires and interviews, which explores how different communication partners, like parents, teachers, how they use objects of reference with people with PMLD. It's been published in the PMLD Link Journal. I will see if I can include a link on this video somehow. And by the magic of post-production editing, I can now tell you the article I wrote will be published in the winter edition of the PMLD Link Journal, which will be number 103. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and happy communicating.